Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us on our first Beyond Bytown lecture of 2022. I would first like to acknowledge that the Bytown Museum and the City of Ottawa are built on unceded Anishinaabe Algonquin territory, and the people of the Algonquin Nation have lived on this territory for millennia. Their culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this place. So my name is Renee Hayward, and I'm the Programming Assistant at the Bytown Museum. I would like to thank our sponsor, Hybrid Construction, who have generously supported this series. So for tonight's lecture, we're going to center around the rich culture and history of the Lebanese community in Ottawa. My first introduction to Lebanese culture was the cuisine, which as most Ottawans know, is deliciously bountiful here. And from there, I've gotten to experience the strong and welcoming community through events like the Lebanese Festival and organizations like Lebanese in Ottawa. So just before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes. This lecture is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel for anyone that was unable to attend tonight. As usual, we will also have time for audience participation following the lecture, where we encourage the audience to ask questions using the Q&A function, which is located at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop in any questions or comments you have throughout the presentation, and we will do our best to get to as many as possible. And now I have the honor of introducing our speaker for tonight, Kamal Deeb. Kamal is a Canadian academic and a university professor of Lebanese descent. He has written over 20 books, including Beirut Culture Shock, A Canadian Tale. A former economist at the Government of Canada, Kamal Deep focuses on Canadian studies, Lebanon and the Arab world, and is fluent in French, English, Arabic, German, and basic Spanish and Italian. And with that, I will pass the virtual floor over to you, Kamal. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Uh, I'm really delighted to uh, be uh, your guest uh, tonight. And uh, I would like to say Saidi to people who understand uh, spoken Lebanese and bonsoir à mes amis au Québec et les francs contariens. Um, I was really excited to hear from Renee and Rebecca that uh, there is a museum for Ottawa Byward uh, Museum. As uh, we are the national capital, there is uh, the, uh, the negative side of this is that uh, everybody looks at Ottawa nationally. The, uh, the Museum of Civilization, the National Gallery, the National uh, History, the one on uh, uh, at the end of Elgin. So uh, it's, it's a good time now to uh, focus on uh, communities that uh, make uh, Ottawa what it is today uh, at the local scene. Uh, my talk tonight will be uh, three parts. I will cover the history and geography of uh, Lebanese immigration to, to Canada and to Ottawa. And uh, I will talk about uh, Lebanese settlement in Ottawa. And uh, I will focus on uh, activities and uh, celebrities, Lebanese Canadian celebrities, during the question period. Uh, the first part is history and geography. Uh, I would like to say that 175 years have passed since the first Lebanese ancestors came from Lebanon to Canada. That is seven generations ago, a generation being 25 years. In Canada, this great land of plenty, our Lebanese ancestors work hard to make a living and today they would be very proud to see their descendants accomplishments as active Canadians in all walks of life. Lebanon and Canada have several things in common. The most obvious is the presence of a large community of Lebanese Canadians, both in Ottawa and other cities in Canada. Secondly, they both have a tree as a symbol in their flag, the maple tree for Canada and the cedar tree for Lebanon and they both use uh, stripes of red in their flags. Both countries were former colonies of France and both countries have snow in winter. And Canada and Lebanon are distinguished by their multi-ethnic, multi-religious populations. Statistics Canada surveys that are conducted every few years about the sense of belonging show each time that 80, 90% of Lebanese Canadians said they felt a strong sense of belonging to Canada. 
No wonder, because uh, more than half are Canadian born and are Canadians for several generations. And some of them just arrived in the past five years. Lebanon, as you can see in the map, is located in the Eastern Mediterranean region. And excluding long-term refugees from neighboring countries, Lebanon has a population of around 5 million and a land area of 10,000 kilometers. That could fit neatly between Ottawa and Montreal. You see, Lebanon is only 200 kilometers uh, long. And uh, on the top map, you can see the distance from Ottawa to Montreal, which is around 200 kilometers. So that's how tiny is Lebanon compared to Canada, almost 10 million kilometers square. The name Lebanon means white, the color white in the old Syriac language. And it was called like that because uh, people coming from distant lands from uh, like few thousand years ago from uh, Egypt or Greece, they the first thing they would see is uh, the snow peaks behind uh, the tiny Phoenician harbors and uh, Jubail, Biblos and other and Sidon and Tyre. And yogurt in Lebanon is called Laban, which is also the same derivative of Lebanon. Some Lebanese, depending on their accent, they say Lebanon, and some others say Lebanon. So it all goes to the same meaning, which is white. Standard Arabic is the official language in Lebanon, but the common language spoken in Lebanon is Lebanese Arabic. And most Lebanese speak French and English, and Armenian is uh, native to Lebanon too, as 5% or more of the population are of Armenian origin. Religiously, as uh, I referred to, comparable to Canada, Lebanon has 18 religious sects that are recognized by Lebanese government, and the major sects are Christian and Muslim. Now I move on to the second part, which history of Lebanese immigration to Canada. Now, uh, to some of you, this is uh, news because uh, some people think that uh, the Lebanese arrived in Canada in 1882, which is wrong. They arrived almost 30 years before that. Uh, the Lebanese first ar documented arrival of a Lebanese person in North America was in 1854, 1854, not 1882. His name was Antonios Bashalani, and he came from the village of Pshali. Pshali is a village near Salima in the Matan region of Mount Lebanon. And he was 20 years old. Uh, Lebanon endured a civil war in 1860, and the Lebanese started coming to Canada after 1861. While many Lebanese came to Canada between 1861 and 1881, official Canadian census information shows the presence of Lebanese Canadians only in 1882. So to some researchers and politicians took that from them, which is both ways it's wrong. Some researchers misunderstood the official census of 1882 as the first arrival, but I gave you the evidence the first arrivals occurred long before that. And uh, especially that uh, some uh, store signs in Ottawa show that uh, Lebanese families uh, started business in Ottawa in 1882. So it doesn't mean that uh, they came to Canada in 1882 and the following day they woke up and they said, okay, I'm gonna open a business. So no, they have been in Ottawa for several years or, or at least second generation and then they opened a, a store. At the end of Elgin, you will notice that the Bauchi family uh, established in 1882 at the end of Elgin Street. Early Lebanese immigrants worked in the Ottawa Valley at the beginning of the late 19th century as farmers, miners, street vendors, pushing horse carts filled with trinkets, household items, textiles, faux bijoux. Now you understand you can, uh, in the world, you live now in the world of e-commerce, but uh, most neighborhoods of Ottawa, they didn't have any stores and they could uh, only buy things if they travel and uh, spend several hours or sometimes days 
to come to downtown Ottawa or to go to Montreal and buy things. So uh, uh, neighborhoods were really very happy to see the Lebanese vendors coming on their horse carts, uh, carrying uh, textiles, uh, uh, trinkets, uh, uh, cosmetics, things for school, things for kids, chocolates. And people waited and expected Lebanese sellers who came to them and sold them goods that are hard to find locally. Before 1918, the Lebanese, like the Syrians and the others who came to Canada, were called Turks because of the passport they carried, as Lebanon and Syria were part of the Ottoman Empire. So uh, after 1918, in, in all of the Americas, the Lebanese were uh, called Syrians because uh, Lebanon was not born yet. But only in 1920, when Lebanon was born, then a uh, distinction started to be made in Canada between Lebanese and Syrians. Uh, until uh, World War II, most early Lebanese immigrants to Canada were among the thousands of Christians who fled Lebanon and Syria and arrived in the Americas. So over 7,000 arrived between 1882 and 1913 and additional 2,000 came between the two world wars. So uh, what happened after that is uh, during the second world war, there was no immigration, but after the second world war, immigration from Lebanon continued. Now I need to explain something to you. Uh, there is a problem uh, in understanding this is that uh, Canadian immigration laws, I will not call them racist, but there were preferences. Uh, immigration laws preferred people from Northern Europe and France and, uh, and uh, British Isles, etc., and less from uh, Asia and Latin America and Africa, whereas they didn't mind people from Southern Europe. So uh, Canadian immigration laws considered Lebanese as uh, South Europeans like Greeks and Italians. So there was no problem for the Lebanese to continue to trickle to Canada in the 50s and the 60s. But a major uh, change occurred in the mid 60s as Canada introduced the point system of immigration, depending on the qualifications and dropped uh, the, uh, the racial profiling of which immigrants to, uh, to bring, etc. In 1971, uh, Canada introduced the category Arab in the Canada census and then introduced the various ethnic groups, uh, Lebanese, Syrian, Egyptian, Algerian, Palestinian, and the Iraqis as uh, joining together under uh, the census uh, and under the category of Arab. What happened after that is that uh, Lebanon fell into a civil war and uh, that's where the major uh, immigration period occurred for Leb uh, for Le from Lebanon to Canada and almost uh, 200,000 uh, arrived in Canada in, the, in those periods. Uh, One million Lebanese left the country during the war, half a million returned, but uh, almost 100,000 uh, came and settled permanently in Canada. Uh, the last wave uh, started in the 1990s and uh, almost 75,000 people came from Lebanon to Canada. So uh, those are the uh, four or five waves over the history of Lebanese immigration to Canada. Now I am reading recently by uh, Lebanese authorities that the uh, sixth wave is taking place right now where uh, Lebanese customs are reporting probably 27,000 Lebanese are leaving every month in uh, the, these uh, past couple of years. So probably there is a new wave of uh, Lebanon losing part of its population. Uh, now, uh, I, I, I should tell you a little joke about uh, the Lebanese in Ottawa. Most people think uh, that uh, in the 70s and late 60s that uh, Kfar Mishki was, was the capital of Lebanon. Actually, Kfar Mishki is a tiny village in Eastern Lebanon of a few hundred uh, population. But uh, a lot of families came and settled in uh, Ottawa from Kfar Mishki and the neighboring villages. And uh, one uh, family of Kfar Mishki came to uh, Canada aboard the Titanic 
in 1912. And uh, you can see the picture of this uh, Formishki family that lost one of its members on, on that ship. So uh, this is, this is uh, the case because uh, in, in the neighborhoods of Ottawa, especially around uh, what we call today the downtown area, uh, most Canadians would see the corner store or families around them from Formishki. So they thought that because it was the, uh, the most visible uh, contingent of uh, the Lebanese community, people thought that Formishki is something important. But on, on the other hand, uh, most Lebanese thought Montreal was the capital because it was the first city they arrived uh, to when they arrived in Canada. Before the uh, planes, before the Second World War, they arrived by boat to, uh, to Boston or, or New York and they trickled uh, by land to, towards Montreal. So that's why uh, Quebec and, uh, and Ottawa, which is at the borders of Quebec, uh, received almost 75% uh, of all Lebanese people coming to Canada. Uh, now, uh, why uh, Lebanese people come to Canada? Because it's a uh, immigrant uh, receiving country and because they were attracted to the French uh, in Quebec, especially in the past 40, 50 years. Uh, I could say that uh, nearly all Lebanese Canadians speak one official language 51% speak English and 45% speak French. Furthermore, Lebanese Canadians are twice as like, likely to speak both English and French compared with the rest of the Canadian population. So on average, uh, Leban Lebanese community uh, have more uh, bilingualism as a percentage compared to other uh, groups in Canada. Uh, also, Lebanese Canadians attend schools and universities at uh, above average compared to other Canadians, and unemployment uh, is uh, lower than the Canadian average. So uh, they try to work hard and strive and uh, educate their kids, and that's why you, you find them in all walks of life, as we will discuss later. Uh, now, among the... Uh, the census shows only people who report their ethnicity, the Canada census, and they don't count every individual. They use a survey. So uh, the, the count is uh, very conservative. And uh, the, uh, the last census of 2016 could be looking at uh, 250,000, 300,000. But if we include uh, all the Lebanese of, or all Canadians of Lebanese ancestry, plus all Canadians who have part Lebanese in their blood, then the number could be 450,000. Half of that is Canadian born. Uh, the last part is uh, Lebanese settlement uh, in uh, Ottawa. So uh, we said that it's almost half a million uh, of Lebanese ancestry and Lebanese uh, and Canadians who have uh, uh, who are partly Lebanese. Uh, so there are regions uh, with over 40,000 uh, Lebanese Canadians, and uh, they are in Ontario, Quebec, Alberta, and some provinces have less than 10,000, such as Nova Scotia and British Columbia. 30% uh, of the Lebanese community reside in Montreal, and uh, the Lebanese community in Montreal constitutes the largest in Canada. Uh, it has about 70,000 people of Lebanese origin, followed by Ottawa at 40,000, Toronto 40,000, and Calgary 25,000, Edmonton 25,000, and a few thousands in each of Halifax, Vancouver, Windsor, London, Fredericton, and Charlottetown. However, in terms of concentration, the Lebanese uh, Canadians represent the largest percentage of the po population of the Ottawa Gatineau region compared to other cities in Canada in terms of concentration. The most common language spoken in Ottawa after English and French is Lebanese Arabic. In Ottawa, Lebanese Canadians are the largest non British and non French community. In the 1970s, 
uh, people came from Eastern Lebanon, but after 1990, people came from uh, areas uh, that were hurt by uh, the ongoing war in Lebanon, especially in uh, the mountain region and Eastern Beirut and uh, Southern Lebanon. Now, uh, one uh, statistic about uh, religion, in the past, almost 85% of Lebanese Canadians were Christian. At the moment, uh, the uh, percentages are 60-40, about 60% 60 Christian and 40% Muslim. So uh, that's the end of uh, the three points that I wanted to mentioned to you and uh, and the questions uh, that uh, we will hear uh, I will uh, elaborate more about the communities and uh, the celebrities thank you so much Kamal it is really interesting I mean when you especially think about like all of our record keeping and the way that we kind of research those histories and those things that get lost in the importance of of good record keeping so that we can understand you know those very accurate dates for when we start seeing all those communities come to Canada. So to kind of lead into our discussion period and to discuss the uh, the presentation a bit more with a few images, I just have a few questions here. Uh, so I guess to start with would be what do you think has been the most enduring legacy of the Lebanese community's contributions to the development of Ottawa as we know it today? Yeah, thank you very much for this question. Actually, a few years back when uh, I used to work in the federal government, I met the director who was uh, of uh, native background and uh, she told me that uh, Ottawa had uh, several villages, uh, native villages in the past and one of them was located exactly where the Ottawa City Hall, another one in Hall. I forgot the details, but uh, we keep the uh, name of the river and we keep the name of the city as a homage to uh, the native peoples. Now for the Lebanese community, uh, they established uh, several institutions in Ottawa. And uh, I, I, uh, so, uh, the first thing that uh, comes to my mind is the St. Elias, uh, Orthodox Cathedral in uh, Ottawa East and the Maronite Church on Donald Street and also the Melkite Catholic Church uh, uh, in Vanny. So, uh, and there are some uh, mosques also around the city. Uh, most uh, churches and mosques are at a short distance from Parliament Hill. Uh, the uh, St. Elias was established in 1929 and today it has more than 2,000 uh, families, but uh, they are very active. They have the Lebanese uh, festival, which is, uh, and that's in the book, uh, Tourism uh, uh, Guides, that this is the largest attraction every year in Ottawa. There is not a single event aside from uh, Canada Day that, uh, that is so uh, large. Uh, tens of thousands uh, come from uh, the, uh, Eastern United States and uh, from uh, Quebec and other provinces to enjoy the, this festival. And it uh, not only showcases uh, food, but also song and dance and uh, a lot of cultural activities on the side. Uh, also, the, this church was uh, uh, innovative in having uh, the uh, garden for Khalil Gibran, who is the uh, pride of all Lebanese Canadians and Lebanese Americans. He is the foremost uh, writer and uh, author and, uh, of Lebanese descent. And he used to come to Montreal to uh, attend uh, uh, activities and have lectures and speak to the communities, especially to uh, young uh, Lebanese Canadians in uh, Montreal. The, uh, there is also uh, <clears throat> the Lebanese school, uh, one uh, very important Lebanese high school the, uh, and the elementary school, Academy Providence, in, uh, also in Eastern Ottawa. It's by the uh, Antonin uh, Order of uh, Nuns and uh, it's uh, impeccable quality and the high standards of uh, French, English and uh, Arabic. And uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it comes under the Ontario Ministry of Education. Uh, also, there is the Lebanese uh, Film Festival uh, in Ottawa. Uh, I should also add that there is the Chin Radio, uh, which is uh, practically most of the hours of the day are devoted to Lebanese broadcasting. 
uh, maybe everybody knows uh, Jerry Apsi and his team uh, who report on uh, news and uh, uh, folklore and the music and the history and all that stuff. And I could go on, but uh, I shouldn't uh, forget uh, Hashem, Hashem, uh, who runs the Lebanese uh, in Ottawa website. It's a huge website that has even the, the tiniest of details about who got married and whatnot and who had children and uh, uh, going up to major events and cultural events. So, uh, so uh, the community in itself is very active, but, uh, but then uh, uh, we could say that uh, they are also uh, active in uh, social life and political life and culture and arts and everything else. Wow, I mean, it's funny because I, I'm walking downtown in Ottawa, you know, you see tons of food places, but there's lots of buildings that like, I think, you know, it's very easy not to like clue in to like the importance of the established communities here and, and really how much of Lebanese culture has permeated Ottawa. Um, I mean, particularly when you talk about Lebanon, like being such a small country in relation, but having such an incredible impact on this city. So our next question here, um, it says, what seems to be the most significant and overlooked aspect of the Lebanese community in Ottawa? Yeah, um, uh, actually uh, what we are doing now really uh, is part answer to this is we need to do more of those uh, promotional events that uh, as we give instruction or educate Canadians about uh, particular communities I mean, not only the Lebanese community, the Indian community, the Chinese, the Italian, like uh, all, all the composants who work together and make uh, Ottawa such a wonderful city. Uh, the Canadian mainstream has little knowledge about Lebanese culture and uh, their knowledge is usually limited to food and probably to dance. Uh, I will tell uh, an anecdote uh, here from my uh, personal experience. A few years back, I was director of research in the government of Canada and an employee in my team asked me about uh, my ethnic origin. And when I said Lebanese, he smiled and commented, I thought the Lebanese usually open a shawarma and falafel place. And he smiled like, uh, I didn't want to, uh, to indulge him. So I, I took it also as a joke. And uh, I said, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's correct what you say. Uh, but the reason uh, for this is that I could not start a business is because I did not have the money. So uh, I went through uh, the burden of enrolling in school and university for 16 years. And then I, I only had this job in the government of Canada as an economist. So I made it as a joke like that, like my first preference would be to, uh, but, uh, but honestly, uh, Lebanese Canadian in Ottawa have a long tradition of cultural creativity and they have provided Canada with a wide variety of talent and Lebanese cult culture is not only food and dance. Imagine how Italian Canadians would feel when people think that Italian culture is limited to pizza and spaghetti and you forget about Rome and Florence and uh, Firenze and the great accomplishments of Italy. Uh, everybody knows uh, Paul Anka Drive uh, one of the major roads in uh, Ottawa South. But then uh, we shouldn't forget that uh, Paul Anka is a real person, is a pop star, equ the equivalence of Frank Sinatra in the States and, uh, and uh, Julio Iglesias and what have you in the 60s and 70s. And what, he came from, uh, his family came from Zahli. Now the largest uh, group of the Lebanese community in Ottawa is Zahli and their annual uh, social gathering is the one of the largest of the Lebanese community. One of his top hits was called uh, Diana. Yeah, some of you uh, search on YouTube, Paul Anka Diana. But do you know that uh, this Diana is, uh, is uh, his uh, sweetheart, Diana Ayoub. Her family comes from Farmishke as well. So it's a small world how uh, things turn. And now from Japan to, uh, to Honolulu, people hear about uh, Diana from Ottawa, thanks to Paul Anka. 
truly so many people. And um, if I could, yeah, go to our next question, but I completely appreciate what you're saying about how much more it is than what we take at face value and the importance of sharing that history. Um, so thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, even just as an individual, getting to learn so much just from one presentation. Um, so how can the history community and Ottawa's and Ottawans in general ensure the proper recognition and appreciation of this community's roots in the area? Yeah, I, th I think uh, organizations like the Bite Town Museum should be uh, funded uh, properly to, to be able to do things like that. And uh, the city of Ottawa has done a lot. For example, they organize uh, Lebanon month uh, every, every summer and the, uh, and the, the events organized by you and the Chin Radio. And, but uh, there are also uh, 50 community organizations that, uh, that are struggling and there is a list available at the, the Embassy of Lebanon on Lyon Street. Uh, they are struggling and they are trying to do activities uh, that promote culture. In addition, there are the associations of uh, churches and mosques and community schools and, and uh, Sunday schools. And uh, at the same time, uh, we need to uh, uh, remind uh, the government, the provincial government and federal government that it was wrong to uh, to cut down, cut back the uh, multiculturalism program of the federal government that was used to uh, fund things like that, uh, empower communities with the very beautiful Canadian understanding that uh, it's great to be integrated in, in Canada and to feel strongly Canadian, but at the same time to be proud of your heritage and of uh, who you are and where your ancestors came from. And uh, at that point, uh, I, I want to say that long gone is the image of the Lebanese immigrant in Canada as the peddlers of goods and farmers of the land. And now well established is the image of Lebanese Canadians as lawyers, medical doctors, engineers, government officials, diplomats, artists, movie stars, painters, opera singers, and journalists. Uh, I, I could uh, name, I have at least 200 names who are in the mainstream uh, Canadian, for example, in politics, in the, air, in the region here. Uh, many people know uh, the deputies, members of parliament, Mark Assad and Pierre Debani and Mac Harp, and uh, people who listen to uh, CBC radio, they know uh, Julie Nasrallah, who has a wonderful uh, daily classical music show, but she's an opera singer herself. People know also Arsine Khanjian, she's a, a movie star, and also Wajdi Mu'awad, he won uh, the Governor General Award. And uh, there is uh, Elisha Antiri of the city of Ottawa. And there is Samir Ghanem, who is one of the top five painters in Canada, he is in Ottawa too. And uh, th there are many others who are, uh, we shouldn't forget Abdullah Obeid, who established the uh, Arab program at the University of Ottawa that in 1982. And after 40, almost 40 years today, uh, a thousand students from all kinds of uh, uh, ethnic groups in Canada attend this program and win credits and sometimes a bachelor degree in Arabic. So, uh, so if you look at it that way, and you look at the uh, inside the government of Canada in Ottawa, the federal departments, you will find. Uh, I, I don't. I, my experience is hundreds, but maybe there are thousands of uh, Lebanese Canadians working in the federal government, the provincial government, the municipalities, and some of them uh, are at the very high positions, ADMs and whatnot. Uh, twice, uh, the Prince Edward Island had a premier from the fa same family. Joseph Giz and his son Robert were premiers in, uh, and uh, in the federal last federal elections, uh, the Lebanese Canadians fielded uh, above 45 uh, candidates in the federal elections in all the political parties. Truly, I mean, I'm sure the list could go on, right? Like even just in the the images that we have here, we only have like eight to ten, but. 
every every role, every part, you know, there's someone, you know, not just in Lebanese history and Canadian history that has occupied, you know, every strata of, of the workforce. And, and truly, it just takes a moment to look around. I mean, just putting together this presentation, I could see, you know, how much pride and joy that people take in their Lebanese heritage and just how easy it is to find all of these people throughout. It's incredible. Um, You're right. I, I was eager to uh, get this information through. Yes. Oh, we're so <laughs> thank you so much for sharing it with us and for just bringing it back to our attention and giving us that moment to, you know, stop and take a look again and and really start looking in your community, start looking around, you know, open your eyes to that. So it's just, uh, I really appreciate you taking the opportunity to share. And that perfectly kind of leads into the last uh, pre-prepared discussion. Uh, so what organizations and resources exist for viewers to learn more about this topic? And would you like to share any projects or initiatives that you're working on? Uh, actually, I, I did uh, a book that uh, did not receive enough coverage and nobody wrote about it. Uh, it's called uh, Ottawa Culture, um, Beirut Culture Shock, a Canadian Tale, uh, in which I mentioned a lot of this, uh, uh, what I said uh, tonight uh, in terms of, uh, of what uh, the community is doing in Ottawa, but uh, within uh, a novel, and also uh, a little bit of my experience at uh, the university and the neighborhood and uh, friendships and all that stuff. So it was a useful uh, book for uh, non-Lebanese Canadians and for Lebanese Canadians, especially when their kids don't read Arabic and, or read books from Lebanon, is to be able to read a book like that. Uh, at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm working on uh, two books. Uh, the first one is uh, a contemporary history of uh, Lebanon. Uh, the way I see it as a Canadian, uh, not, uh, not being uh, contaminated by uh, the politics of uh, the internal politics of Lebanon. And the second uh, book is uh, uh, the history of French Lebanon, which is from 1798 when Napoleon almost invaded Lebanon to uh, 1920 when uh, Lebanon became uh, under French mandate until 1946. So uh, those are the two of my projects that I'm working on right now. But people could follow my uh, Facebook page. That's the only venue that I have uh, personally, and uh, they could read more about uh, my books and my work and stuff like that. Fantastic. And what we'll do is- uh, I, I, should, I, I should mention uh, aside that uh, I'm equally proud so that people don't misunderstand. I love Lebanese food and I'm equally proud of the Lebanese restaurant and the tabbouleh and all that stuff. Actually, there are 5,000 Lebanese restaurants in Canada and almost 900 in the Ottawa region alone. And uh, supermarkets, Lebanese supermarkets, people like you will find more non-Lebanese going to, to those, especially the largest two on uh, Saint Laurent Boulevard in, in Ottawa. So uh, that's, that makes also a very strong touch from uh, Lebanese culture that people from, uh, from non-Lebanese communities in Ottawa, they love Lebanese food and they love Lebanese groceries. It is such a great way to connect, I think, with different cultures is trying the food as like just as a first kind of like getting your feet wet. But really, there's just so there's a lot of depth. And so it is great to kind of see both sides of that of that story yeah. and the history. So I think we can move on to the audience Q&A because we have lots of people entering into the chat here. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Ania Jamila says, um, why would a Lebanese immigrant after arriving in Montreal decide to settle in Ottawa? What do you think are the motivations? Uh, actually, there, there is a point of time where, uh, where Montreal could not take uh, a lot of uh, people and uh, Ottawa was a driving distance. So uh, people who came from Eastern Lebanon, they didn't speak French and they didn't speak English. Uh, probably the, a few families moved to Ottawa and uh, they started the, in farms because Eastern Lebanon is farmland and also uh, peddlers they're selling stuff to in Aylmer and in Hull and, uh, uh, and Ottawa uh, during that time, like even in the late 70s, when you go from downtown to Alta Vista, that's really the Ottawa neighborhood. That's the extent of the city. 
now you can drive uh, to Canada and beyond for one hour and still you are within distance of Ottawa or within the greater Ottawa or whatever. So, uh, so there are some uh, places in Ottawa, such as on Lion uh, Street, where uh, an entire block was owned by uh, people from uh, Far Mishki. And now uh, there are uh, high rise buildings uh, where the apartment is 600 to $1 million, etc. cetera. So uh, which shows that early on uh, during their uh, arrival in the early 19, uh, 12 to 19, 20, 19, 30, uh, the Lebanese had advantage uh, settle, of settlement in Ottawa and they had the, the best locations for their businesses and restaurants and the places to live, etc. So, uh, and the people who are uh, uh, right now in their 60s or 70s or from their parents, they know about that. Uh, it's not that, uh, for example, uh, uh, People look at Lebanese as a community and as an immigrant, etc. They know they have been here more than 100 years and they have respect for that. And they, they know a lot about their personal relationships and about cousins and whatnot and a lot of intermarriage. Actually, one uh, distinguishing uh, matter about the Lebanese Canadians is that they intermarry with the other uh, ethnic groups quite easily. So uh, in the most families, I, I actually learned from... Uh, the posts uh, that Hashem places in uh, Lebanese and Ottawa, where, for example, if somebody dies, then it shows the children, they are married Italian or, or Chinese or Algerian or French or etc. So it's it's telling that the Lebanese, they, they don't congregate in one neighborhood and they don't really marry from each other, but they are open to the wider Canadian society. Yeah, definitely that allows for for a lot more movement when like those pockets of communities are much more spread out um and so i'm just going to go over to my colleague rebecca because we do have a question uh from someone in french so we have a question here from uh, michael boucher and he's asking is it just d'affirmer que la grande majorité des immigrants libanais étaient chrétiennes et que de facto le liban d'aujourd'hui se compose essentiellement des musulmans surtout chiites uh, actually, the uh, Canadian authorities do not tell the religious composition of immigrants. Uh, it's not the Canadian way of doing things. It's really the sending country. Uh, the Lebanese uh, in the early 19th, uh, 20th century and the late 19th century, uh, the people who uh, were persecuted chose to immigrate to Canada were mostly Christian. During the Civil War, it was uh, mixed. And after 1990, it was from Southern Lebanon where there is uh, an ongoing uh, conflict and uh, it's typically Muslim. So uh, it's really the, uh, the dynamics of uh, immigration from Lebanon to send uh, different uh, religious groups and uh, the areas in Lebanon where uh, there is no war, no conflict. Uh, you don't see much people uh, many people leaving uh, their villages or regions or, uh, or cities. So uh, the composition right now is, uh, is really a factor of, uh, of the dynamics of immigration over the past 150 years. Yeah, you know, getting all this information like published and, and in writing would be so important just to really understand those like dynamics that have existed and, and to really understand like, those communities and how we operate so globally now. Um, so just like a few interesting things that I've been noticing in the chat, lots of people sharing their stories, which is so fantastic. And thank you, so lots of thank you for the wonderfully informative presentation. Um, and uh, what we got here. So excellent and informative, particularly interesting, uh, the fact that people from Lebanon were in Ottawa so early as the 19th century, so much appreciated. And oh, people sharing their stories. So thank you for everyone who's who's come in here and, and asked lots of questions and, and put many stories in the chat and we'll copy that for you, Kamal, so you can have something to, to review later. So moving on. Um, so I've read the St. Elias Church would welcome new Lebanese immigrants. In what areas were they helping? Housing, community connection, maybe. So another question kind of asking, uh, you know, what some of the outreach programs at St. Elias are. Uh, actually. Uh, over 
over more than 50 years, uh, the St. Elias Cathedral and the Maronite and the other ones uh, are really into uh, the human uh, support. For example, they have uh, special committees designed to uh, help uh, new arrivals with the shelter and food and clothes and schooling and uh, registration with the health services, et cetera, and finding uh, work. There are individuals dedicated to that. Not that they are employees or something. It's, it could be a lawyer uh, and his family who are within the church as uh, in the parish. And they say, okay, every weekend I'm gonna help with this. It could be a women association who will say, okay, we will uh, cook for the festival and collect the money and donate it to uh, immigrants and refugees, etc. And people who uh, come and uh, the Canadian authorities know about that. Typically people who come from Lebanon, they know that there are established networks in the community they could rely on. Uh, you could, uh, for example, as in an anecdotal way, you could arrive at the Ottawa International Airport and walk outside and see the taxi drivers. Some of them are Lebanese Canadians. And you will say, well, I just arrived from Lebanon and I don't know what to do. So they will drive you to where the, to, the, to a church or to a family or some place or the Lebanese, the Arab Lebanese Association, I forgot now. I should mention that they also help people find jobs. So uh, this is an anecdotal way of telling, uh, there is a network in place to help. Uh, and uh, Father Hajal of the St. Elias Church told me many times a lot of details about the donations being collected, about uh, how they help uh, every time there is a conflict or war going on in Lebanon and how they, uh, they help uh, the families in need, etc. cetera. So this is, uh, this is taking place all the time. The, the, same, uh, the same thing, like I know from uh, in Gatineau here, the Catholic Church, the Quebecois Catholic Church, also they have things like that to help people in Africa and to help poor in Gatineau, etc. So uh, associations like that do offer support. They, f they find it as their priority. That's fantastic. And, and it tandems one of the questions I do see here from Anisia saying, hi, Dr. Kamal, are there any non-religious Lebanese community association or groups you can list here? And I think you touched on a, on a few of them, but definitely I think finding those connections like through some of those, those resources you listed. Um, I also did drop the Lebanese in Ottawa uh, link in our chat. Uh, so you can scroll through that and be able to connect to that as well. But is there anything that you'd like to add for specifically non-religious? Uh, I, I, I should mention that, uh, yes, in Lebanon, there are 18, 18 uh, religious groups and uh, the people uh, theoretically say, oh, the, the Muslims fight the Christians, the Christians fight the Muslims and the Sunnis fight the Shi, etc. I could say it's totally uh, misleading because uh, human beings in general, all over the world, uh, they are not uh, stones, they are not rocks, sediments, uh, that they don't change. People do change. And uh, the Lebanese people, given the opportunity, they will have wonderful democracy and a strong economy. One evidence of that is, uh, is Ottawa. Uh, Lebanese people, uh, Lebanese Canadians in Ottawa, it doesn't matter what religious background, they have uh, businesses together, uh, the Lebanese uh, Canadian students at the universities, they have uh, same clubs, they have the same activities, they join together. And uh, even if uh, there are some uh, hardline uh, political organizations, the, uh, the tone of uh, communication is, uh, is down and uh, friendly and uh, they don't really. And some uh, hardline uh, uh, people, uh, who uh, support some political organization in Lebanon, they could be the accountant of, uh, of a place or restaurant or supermarket where the owner supports his theoretically enemy in Lebanon. So uh, anyway, uh, being in Canada and, uh, and uh, given a new uh, life in Canada and to raise the family and to get health and education has given the Lebanese hope to, uh, to do better and to forget about the agonies of uh, the old country. And uh, I mean, so many of these questions are so perfectly related. Uh, so with this large number of Lebanese in Canada and Ottawa, 
why do we not see the impact of their presence locally and nationally? And it's also a big question, but perhaps you have some insight in that. Uh, and, and I think it'll uh, kind of help with that idea of how we, uh, how I we should, can highlight. I should, I, I should say that uh, whoever asked this question need to uh, uh, get informed better. Uh, actually, the Lebanese Canadians are one of the busiest and the most involved of all ethnic groups in Canada. Uh, I gave some highlights, but uh, I have uh, in my document here about 300 names of Lebanese Canadian involvement. I said that they fielded uh, 46 candidates in the last federal election. Uh, they are in sports, they are in, uh, in arts, they are in movies, uh, they are in, uh, in song. Uh, I mentioned uh, Julie Nasrallah in, in Ottawa. Uh, they uh, produce uh, the books. The Governor General Award was given twice to uh, Lebanese uh, Canadian in Montreal, uh, Rawi Hajj, for his uh, uh, excellent uh, novels. And uh, Rawi Awajdi uh, Mu'awad, the playwright, his uh, plays are turned into uh, uh, Quebecois films uh, that are shown at uh, world uh, festivals. Uh, in uh, Ottawa, the municipality of Ottawa, I mentioned uh, Elisha Tiri. But if you walk through the couloir, uh, through the halls of the city of Ottawa, you will find dozens of uh, Lebanese Canadians as employees, as directors, as engineers. Actually, I, I know from the 70s that there are so many civil engineers who, who were Lebanese graduates of Ottawa U and Carleton who worked in the city of Ottawa. Uh, I know that uh, for a fact that I worked in five federal departments, you will see dozens of Lebanese Canadians in every department and they are usually uh, uh, performing very well and doing very well. And they are respected and promoted by their peers and by uh, superiors as they are doing, uh, doing very well. So, uh, and uh, the uh, churches and the mosque in Ottawa, they are so uh, wealthy in, in terms of uh, what they are doing uh, of uh, generating uh, festivals and uh, creating schools and uh, platforms and the clubs and sports events, etc. And uh, we don't forget that uh, overall Lebanese Canadians are, are not like Chinese Canadians. It's, it's still a small community. And uh, many Lebanese Canadians, they, they just, I said, more than half are Canadian born. And you never know, maybe there are four or five generations Canadian born. Lebanese Canadians tend to disappear within the, the mainstream. Uh, like in Brazil, they say 10 million of Lebanese origin, but where are they? They are, they are Brazilian, they speak Portuguese, and there are very few who have this strong attachment to Lebanon. Uh, one, uh, one, one thing that, which is uh, a dilemma for Lebanese Canadians is that uh, once you have second generation, they tend to, uh, disappear and have few linkages uh, with Lebanon. Actually, Lebanon remains alive in the, the mentality of uh, half the Lebanese is because people have arrived in Canada in the past 20, 30 years, and they still go, uh, go back and forth. Imagine that uh, immigration from Lebanon to Canada has uh, stopped or, uh, or uh, was limited or ended, then within one generation, you might not have the strength uh, or the strong ties to the old country. So that's why uh, uh, it's, it's not really uh, strong like the Chinese or the Indian communities. And um, so we actually have another question from Anisia here and that relates to this. So it says, uh, is it your impression that it's become harder and harder for Lebanese to immigrate to Canada? So what do you kind of see as, as people that were born in Lebanon immigrating to Canada in a contemporary setting? Well, uh, I, I could say this. First of all, uh, the authorities in Lebanon, religious authorities and uh, state authorities uh, hate it very much that people are leaving the country by tens of thousands. Lebanon already lost 25 to 35% of the top brains in the country. There is a huge serious brain drain leaving uh, country of the top talents of the land. And spe uh, specialty uh, professions uh, like in the tourism industry and in, uh, in construction, etc., are, are also leaving by the tens of thousands. Uh, uh, if you really uh, watch closely, 
the religious authorities, uh, they have uh, frequent uh, promotional material urging people not to leave the country and not to go anywhere. Now, this is the uh, push factor is not there, like the authorities and the people, but the people really want to, uh, to leave and to come to Canada and go to Australia and other places in the United States and the Latin Americas. But the problem is people do not know how the uh, Canadian authorities are taking this. Canada really needs immigrants and people in Lebanon know very little about this. Uh, people don't know that a few years back, Canada took in 250,000 per year. Right now, the, uh, the estimate is about 450,000 uh, people uh, will be needed to, to compensate for the loss of population, for the aging population, for Canadian economy, for replenishing the labor market. And immigrants, they work and they pay taxes and they make the economy grow. So uh, Canada understand that very well. And uh, they really uh, uh, want to attract, uh, and the Lebanese Canadians are really a prime uh, kind of immigrants that uh, Canada really uh, is uh, eager to, uh, to bring to Canada. Uh, I remember when the war ended in Lebanon in 1990, that one minister of, uh, Minister uh, in Quebec, uh, she was almost crying and she said, well, now many uh, Lebanese people will, will leave Canada and go back to Lebanon. And uh, this did not happen like uh, in a big way, but uh, she was referring to how the Lebanese built uh, the northern part of the island of Montreal, especially around Saint Laurent, and those places, and how they contributed to the growth of the city economically and artistically. Actually, like Ottawa, Montreal has the uh, largest the fest cultural festival. It's called the, the Arab Festival, uh, the Arab World Festival, Festival du Monde Arabe in, in Montreal. So, uh, so contrary to what people think in Lebanon, Canada always welcomed the Lebanese people to come to Canada. Um, and so we do have a, a, a kind of like comment and question wrapped into one um, from Bob Maddie here and saying, my great grandparents came to Canada in the late 1800s, Ellis Island, then to Farnham, Quebec. I still get asked where I'm from. I find this question offensive. Do you feel Lebanese are being more accepted now in Canada? Uh, I could say that uh, they were never rejected. They uh, uh, actually, I, I could say uh, very honestly, all my life in Canada, I never experienced one element of racism. Uh, and uh, less than racism is attitude. I did not see any negative attitude. Uh, it's the tendency of a human being to blame the others by pretending racism or discrimination or attitudes or whatever. Now, uh, in Canada, things are more nuanced. I'm not going to deny that uh, human uh, trappings take place and people get jealous or, for example, have uh, grudges, etc. And things happen, but in a nuanced way, people don't show it in employment and uh, favoritism and all that. But it's not like in, in other countries. There are laws, there are programs, there are things. Can, can you believe that uh, when I was uh, studying at the university, the Bank of Canada came in the university center and had the table and started interviewing questions. And I remember uh, I was just walking by and the gentleman uh, asked me a few economics questions from Economics 101 and I answered and they hired me. Well, if I was, uh, if I was uh, growing up in Lebanon and I went to university in Lebanon, I would never dream of a government job because uh, who are you and what, uh, what is your background and how much money your family makes, etc. It's uh, disastrous in Lebanon, the nepotism and the corruption, and all that stuff. So uh, we take it easy and we say, thanks God for Canada and thanks God only because uh, things here are much better. If you ask people who come to Canada over the past 100 years, that's surveys, I'm not talking from my head. Set six Canada survey, they say they came to Canada for two things, health and education. That's what people need around the world. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you for your insight. Um, so I'm gonna 
We're, we're at 7.59, so I'm just going to make time for one more question. So I'm sorry for all the ones we didn't get to. I will be uh, copying down our chat and uh, we can continue to discuss Kamal and if we want to reach out to people or, or post them uh, afterwards on our social media. Uh, so the I, last I, I will say, sorry, I will say that I suggest that soon after the end of uh, the Corona virus that we will have a life like we we come in in the hall in the in your hall and have a, a face to face meeting and uh, to end this Zoom thing and make it yeah, more like the we're past. all hoping for right to get to that point. <laughs> so lastly, um, it's two questions here. So one from Bill Vogel asking uh, Kamal if you have any photographs of early Lebanese family or store or stores in Ottawa, and that kind of wraps together with. Are there many resources establishing the early history of Lebanese immigration, like early census records and or family history? So I guess in your research and in your experience as an author, um, have you found many images of Lebanese Canadian families? And uh, what are some of the resources or records that you've been able to, to come across for those families? Actually, actually uh, there are thousands of uh, photographs of uh, Lebanese uh, immigrants in Ottawa and Canada. The, uh, the Canada archives is in Gatineau right now. They have uh, documents, thousands of documents that uh, showcase the early settlement in Canada. Uh, there are a series of books uh, by uh, Canadian Heritage uh, Department. One of them is called The Arabs in Canada by, uh, what's his name, Abu Labaha, Abu Laban. He has uh, at least 40 pictures inside. And uh, also, uh, if, if you visit any of the churches in Ottawa, they have records and they have hundreds of pictures of early families. And uh, if, if you really want to promote the issue, you can uh, have a call to all the families in Ottawa. And they all of them, they have those albums, and, uh, not, not, the, not the cell phone with the 5,000 photographs. They have uh, actual albums like books and they have pictures going back to the 1930s and earlier. But uh, it's there for people who want to uh, ask for it. And it's important because it will be lost and there will time, uh, time will come when uh, people don't know how much the Lebanese, uh, uh, actually it's a story I learned from a German uh, professor in, uh, in Manitoba. He told me he was born in a town that was uh, that had the German museum and they had all the kind of culture and stuff like that. Now it's lost and the gas station replaced the museum and very few people uh, know that this used to be a town uh, built and uh, lived in by German settlers. Wow, yeah, I mean, the importance of, of preserving our records and for people, you know, enthusiastically pursuing that history um, is so important to make sure that these stories and histories remain in our yeah. records and remain in our minds. Um, so with that, we're coming up 802 and I just want to mention because uh, Stephen Matiusi, who was our previous manager of visitor experience, has dropped into our Q&A. I wonder when we'll finally see Ottawa's first Lebanese Canadian mayor. And uh, I always think that's a really exciting kind of ex exciting future to look forward to. Um, and so coming up to that, I would just like to say, Kamal, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we wrap up? No, I, I thank you. And uh, I'm proud Canadian. Fantastic. So of course, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and taking the time out of your day to speak with us and answering all these questions. So much appreciation from all the Bytown staff. Um, and I'd like to say thank you to all my colleagues at the Bytown Museum. So thank you, Rebecca and Anu and Grant and Robin. Thank you to our sponsor, Hybrid Construction, and thank you to our audience who make these events possible. If you could please check out our website, bytownmuseum.com, to find out more about our museum, programs, or collections. And of course, while you're there, if you feel so inclined, please consider becoming a member or making a small donation. And of course, keep an eye on our social media and our website for new lectures, seasonal programs, and events coming up in 2022. Thank you again, and I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you, Kamal. Merci, shukran.